It's going really, really well. We're definitely playing to a lot of people we've never played to before. Rise Against is enormous. We had no idea when we got asked to do the tour, I think the scale of what the tour was actually going to be. So it's by far the biggest venues, pro sound, like everything, you know, it's like a pro tour. I mean, the most major change I guess that's happened to all of us is the fact that like we're all in a full-time band now. And a year ago, we were we still had jobs when we went home, and we still so we had to make a lot of changes to our lives. Like two of us are literally homeless, um, you know, to live with their parents. Like we had to make a lot of steps to be able to do this full time. So I guess the biggest change is now that all four of us really have like everything invested in Gaslight Anthem. Like there's nothing else for us right now. <laughs> Brian writes the lyrics. The stories in the record are not. Um, biographical or I mean autobiographical like I know he he takes a lot of influence from like the things going around him even things happening to us and his friends back home and all this stuff and it's sort of like a collection of that I mean and that's that's what storytellers do you know what I mean they try and like relate to everybody and I think that's where the bulk of the lyrics come from is just hearing and seeing other people and translating that feeling into into a song we always thought we're like, we want to be on a bigger label that can get us to more people, but like, I want to be able to like, drunk dial the owner of the label. I want to be able to like, call him and ask him a question. Side One seemed like the best fit because they were a good label with good connections and everything we needed, but at the same time, they were like, just real dudes. They all work super hard and chill hard and like, good people and it, it felt the most comfortable. We didn't want to make the same record twice, especially sonically, it just, that's when bands start, I think, like, spinning their wheels, you know? So we wanted to move, and we got really heavily influenced by, like, the soul thing, you know, recently, and the, just a lot of the music from, like, the 50s and 60s, and went in with that in mind, and Ted Hutt, the guy who produced it, he was on board, like, trying to get that sound and get these, like, natural tones. It was really important for us not to get, like, all these processed sounds, like, from Pro Tools and all these audio programs, we wanted to get like good natural sounds and good guitar stuff. I guess it was our effort to make a, a semi-classic sounding record. I love backseats. I also love playing it live. It's like one of those songs that just feels good live. Like there's never any sort of apprehension or thinking about playing. It's just one of those ones that really just like comes out and comes out natural and just feels feels really good, you know? You'll notice, especially in a place like Germany, there's not as much of like like a release it shows. Like people just don't go ape like they do in the States or Canada. Like, people are really, like, focused on what you're playing, focused on the music. So you'll play a show sometimes with, like, 50 kids who look like statues, you know? Like, they don't look like they're into it, but you'll walk off stage and they're like, that was great, and they'll buy merch. And So it is, it, it, they have a different way of, like, releasing themselves. We put out three records in a year and a half, so... Um, we definitely look forward to just giving 59 like some time and some room to breathe and we have plans to tour on it already until like middle of next year um, so I mean we're we're already writing we always write you know and we're already thinking but there's nothing set in stone <laughs>